YouTube, back at it again with another video. You're watching Serena's Animals. This is Petty, and we're gonna jump right on into this video on how to convince your parents to let you get a pet. A little disclaimer is make sure that you compromise with your parents. Usually your parents will say no for a reason, whether it be money, space, time, a fear, or an allergy. My mom is allergic to arachnids, and I'd really like to have a scorpion, but I agreed with her on not getting one because if it got out, it would it would end badly for her and the scorpion so make sure you compromise let's jump right on into this video with number one being do your research Just know the ins and outs of the animal make sure you know how big it will get the enclosure sizes it will need whether it how many hides it needs how the humid how high the humidity needs to be um if it needs like foliage whatever the case may be know the ins and outs of the animal make sure you know what it eats everything just ins and outs every nook and cranny number two is also if you see me looking down i have a notepad here with everything so number two is this is for those people who have like really overprotective parents Ugh. if you have overprotective parents like me bring up the point that your parents like to your parents that hey this if it's like a animal that like will keep you busy hey this animal will keep me out of trouble that's how i ended up with all these different animals because my the way my parents think is okay she can take care of them no okay, no problem keeps her out of trouble i don't mind just you take care of it because i'm not going to and that's a lot like if you have again overprotective parents this is like a one-way trip for you Number three is make sure you have the time that you want for the animal because it's not fair to the animal if you're not properly taking care of it or you just don't have time for it. It's not fair to them. And then your parents can be like, well, I'm tired of taking care of this animal. You better give it away to somebody before it dies. And then you give it away to somebody and then it just prepares you for heartache later. So I'll give you a couple of animals who do take quite a bit of good who do take quite a bit of attention at least in my opinion let's say rodents they need quite a bit of attention um i'd say like certain kinds of birds do need pretty decent amount of attention some dogs as well like not all dogs are like oh my god love me but like some are um one of my dogs she needs quite a bit of attention and it's annoying how much attention she needs but some of my other dogs, like my dog Pip, she doesn't need too much attention. She's a loner. She doesn't like being around people too much. She's she's a she's a mommy's girl. But even then, she doesn't like to cuddle with me often. And the only time she cuddles with me is at night when she's going to sleep. That's it. And even then, most of the time she sleeps in her crate. I don't make her sleep in her crate, but she sleeps in there sometimes. But make sure you have time for the animal. Another animal that doesn't need too terribly much attention are hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are pretty chill, laid back. You just switch out their water and their food every morning and you're good. I personally don't like hermit crabs. I've had them before. Um, it was a class pet and I took care of them. And I don't, I don't like hermit crabs. Uh, I saw what they did to my friend's hand one day. He has a scar on his hand from one of these, these suckers pinching him. I took him to a recruitment once and I had to wear protective gloves because I was terrified. <laughs> And all the kids, because all these kids are younger than me, because I'm in high school and they're in middle school, and they're like, why are you wearing gloves? I go, because I don't enjoy getting pinched by hermit crabs. Not fun. But my boyfriend, no problem. But again, make sure that you have the time for your animal. That's really important. Number five is five. Number four is space. Make sure you have the space for the animal. I am a god at making space for animals. Um, but make sure that, like, okay... Let's take Gajil, for example. I will have to move his enclosure eventually once he gets big enough to be in like a 55 or a 75. This, I think this is a 55, but it'll just depend. Just make sure you have the space, make the space, just space. Number five and the last one on our list is make sure you can afford the animal. Now, if it's a relatively expensive animal, okay understandable your parents don't really want it um but if it's something pretty like something that's a vegetarian or something and you 
and your family are like huge on vegetables like me and my mom we love fruits and vegetables if you have like a vegetarian animal you can always share what you make like your you know leftover scraps or whatever from the vegetables or whatever you can always give them to the animal because that's what they eat um some dog some animals need like spe special food like snakes and like lizards and geckos and stuff like that and dogs need special food so but i personally think the most expensive dog that i own dog i'm so tongue twisted this morning i think the most expensive animal that i own are my dogs they've caused us to have to get new flooring because they're really really attitude filled animals they pee on everything they're potty trained but if you tell them no they won't res they won't hesitate to pee on something of yours um, their food is relatively expensive, their pee pads, their leashes, or harnesses, because they chew through everything of theirs, and having to go get them groomed and everything, it just, it's a whole lot of whole, you, you itchy? It's a whole lot of whole lot of that some people don't want to deal with. Um, but again, make sure, just, this all falls into research. If your animal like if you do the research all of these will fall into place other than number two but again just make sure you have time space money and the care and love that you need for your animals because it's not fair to the animal if they're being neglected when i was younger i was obsessed with watching um i can't remember what the show was called but it was stationed in austin texas or dallas texas one of the two and these people would go out and save all these animals and take them back to the ASPCA because they were just being neglected. And it's not fair to the animal. I feel bad every time I go to, like, a, a pet, a, what is it called? A pet store or a, um, or the ASPCA because I see all these animals that I want to take home and I can't because I already have plenty that I've adopted and rescued myself. Like, Lupin here, he's... A rescue slash adoption of mine I I'm his primary caretaker according to my my school teacher because she's not a huge fan of him so that's a whole other video for a whole other day anyway I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I'm not sure when this video will be going up so happy I know school gets out Friday here in Florida so happy get out of school day whatever you want to call it have a great weekend rest of your week what what whatever it's called anyway i hope you guys did enjoy this video bye